Good afternoon, guys. It's working, bringing you a quick update on Bitcoin. Hope you guys are having a wonderful afternoon. Uh, we're looking at Bitcoin to the U.S. dollar. This is the four-hour chart on Bitfinex, guys. And uh, sorry, I haven't given you an update in a few days. It's been uh, been on the road, been traveling. Um, and uh, anyway, getting back in the saddle now a little bit. Um, it's going to be a longer weekend for me. But anyway, as we uh, as we look here, Bitcoin obviously broke out of this wedge, um, had moved sideways, started consolidating right below our known resistance here of six five four zero. I told you in the past, it's an extremely relevant zone. We need to get above this prior order structure. Here within this wedge, which was sitting right here at again about the top of 6540, it did come up, wicked above it here, created a higher high, which was bullish, uh, came back down. Uh, we did test this prior order structure right down here by just a wick, right back up, right back down again. We can see that this uh, um, almost a double bottom here, not quite, but a little higher, um, higher low, but still almost, almost quite a double bottom. Again, testing this order structure down here, came right back up, and now we're still hovering right below this 6540. Um, I do think this is um, um, is going to break in one direction or another, guys, and I understand. Understand that it's uh, it's it's frustrating to say you know it's going to go up it's going to go down um, yeah I, I get that guys it's uh, it is frustrating um, but the, you know, right now unfortunately we're not th this is in my opinion a rather bullish pattern uh, that we're looking at but I can see market makers uh, driving price in one direction or <clears throat> excuse me in one direction or another I do believe they want price to come back down lower um, which is I, I think they're kind of causing this consolidation here to see if shorts are going to get out of the market if we come in here and we look at our short positions however uh, where was I here. There we go. If we come over here and we look at shorts here on Bitcoin, guys, shorts are just maintaining their uh, their positions. They believe with all their heart, retail believes with all their heart that this price is going to come down lower. Um, if I come and I look at longs, longs have been stacking just a little bit in the last few days. Um, but again, nothing relative to shorts. Relatively speaking, they're moving sideways um, and, you know, showing no real significance um, of, uh, of, of any momentum shift at all um, in retail thinking. Retail overall believes this market is going to go lower. Now, one of the reasons I say that this is going to be breaking out other than the fact that we can see that it's just consolidating here moving sideways um, creating lower highs um, a couple of higher lows if I look at just these last two wicks here possible double bottom came back up moving sideways here um, you know th this can only test this resistance so many times before one or two things happens either price ends up breaking down uh, dramatically or price does break above this resistance and as we know the more the more that this gets tested the weaker the resistance gets Excuse me. Um, so I, I'm going to be watching for a possible breakout if price does break above this zone. I don't believe this 382, which is where uh, price tested here, the 382 fib. If I pull my swing high to swing low, we can see that it was getting held down here prior to the breakout below the 236. Came up here, tested the 382, and has been hovering right in between the two ever since, um, and showing no real direction of which way it's going to go. Um, if price does end up decisively breaking above this 6540, and by decisively, I need to see a four hour candle um, that not just opens, not just closes, but both opens and closes above 6540. If that does happen, I think it's going to quickly come up and test this 6750 uh, mark. I do believe that this is going to be a relevant um, uh, resistance area. Um, we can see in the past here, it's been it was the neckline of the inverse head and shoulders. It's acted as resistance numerous times here, 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 uh, here, here, here. And I do believe it'll act as resistance again if it does come up. Now, if we do break above this zone, the area that I'm watching is uh, this uh, um, uh, 618 fib to 65 fib. That's the golden pocket. Why is that relevant? It's relevant for numerous reasons. Well, you know, number one, we can see that that is going to be a relevant zone just by looking at the candles. Even if this wasn't the 654, we look at uh, uh, look at where the uh, uh, prior uh, support has happened, um, and we know what what is usually support as resistance and acted as resistance here, acted as resistance here before breaking up. Um, so what usually acts as a strong support acts as a strong resistance. Uh, we that that is more than likely going to be the case here. And to back up that theory, um, we also have the um the golden pocket so that's between the the, the for those of the that don't know the golden pocket and i apologize guys if i, I know and sometimes my analysis i use some terms that um a lot of people have told me in the comments they don't understand uh basically the golden pocket is the uh fib level between the 618 fib and the 65 fib um that is where um a, a large majority of price ends up retracing to um, um just just relatively speaking i encourage you to google it if you uh, uh so i don't have to get into it here uh, but anyway um that's relevant zone because the last three highs. Um, if I come in here and I pull out um, um, and look at the bigger picture here, the last three highs, um, so in other words, this last high here, which was about 6420, uh, this one here at about 6500, this one here at about 10,000. So the last three highs, they all fell perfectly within the golden pocket. They all retraced perfectly within the gold pocket. If you go swing high, swing low, you'll see that that retracement was perfect inside the golden pocket. So why am I getting excited about the golden pocket? Uh, or or why am I watching it, I should say? Not excited isn't the right word, but why is it a relevant zone? Um, well, it's clearly going to be a resistance, but if price can break above this golden pocket, 
then that is going to break that trend of retracing to the golden pocket the last three times and possibly could indicate a, uh, a, a bullish trend reversal. Now, I'm not saying that's going to be the case. Clearly, we need to take out this prior high of, of uh, 7420 um, to, before we can say that there is a trend reversal. But I do think that would be the first sign, obviously, of a possible trend reversal. It would be an extremely bullish sign, in my opinion, if price can break above this 6.5. So if price, let's call it that's sitting somewhere around 69.50, somewhere thereabouts. Let's call it 7. That's a good psychological. If price can break above 7,000, it's going to be extremely bullish indication in my opinion. To the downside, what are we watching? I'm watching price come down, possibly creating, um, possibly entering back into this order structure here. I do believe if um, um, if price does break above, I'm just going to extend. Well, that's not what I wanted to extend. If I extend out this uh, this wedge here, the support area, the ascending support area, this wedge. So I extend this out. This is generally a good rule of thumb. Anytime price breaks out of a wedge like this, if it retraces, if you extend out the ascending support line, and if price retraces below the ascending support, the probability tells you that it's going to come back down and at least retest this prior low. That's just, you know, just a, a good trick of the trade, guys. You'll find that that happens numerous times if it breaks. If price bounces up at, at this um, ascending support here, gets a nice strong bounce up, that's a very, very bullish sign that, that, that uh, price is oftentimes going to, it's it's come up, it's created its high, it's done its um, it's done its retracing here. In, in Elliott terms, we'd be looking at this as possibly, possibly a one, two, up for the three, and this would just be part of a subway and a large subwave of a larger wave three, or you could just count this as a one, two, depending on new. I, I don't even like using Elliott guys when, when volume is so low and volume is so extremely low right now. But just to give you kind of an idea here, we are looking at a retracement here. And once we get that bounce off of this retracement, um, we would, uh, we would expect a very impulsive looking move up. So I'm going to be watching this ascending support here, watching for that bounce. And again, just to, just to reiterate um, why I know some of you guys are, are stark Elliott traders. I, I, all I did was trade Elliott back in uh, um, back in January and uh, December of last year, um, but December of last year, January of this year, I should say, because volume was so high. Right now, volume is so weak; it just doesn't work nearly as well in a weak volume. I mean, yeah, you can make it work, but you're so you're forcing it so much. You're trying to force a count. I find, um, and I'm not I'm not condemning anybody that uses Elliott. It's an excellent excellent technique, especially in higher volume. But right now, I don't find it's nearly as useful. And we can see right now, volume sitting around three three billion, four billion, three billion. We're in the low three billions right now. Um, it's just pathetic. We need to see volume um, at or above at least eight billion, in my opinion, to signal a good signal a, a good trend change. Back in January and December, we had volume well above 10 billion per day, up to 15 billion per day, up to 20, sometimes 25. I mean, that wasn't uncommon at all. So that's the kind of volume we need to see it at least above 8 billion, in my opinion, to signal a, a nice trend change. Um, but uh, but anyway, that's what I'm watching for now. Um, one of the things that I'm keeping an eye on here is this four-hour chart. Um, we can see that these are our moving averages um, and, and exponential moving averages. Anytime you see on a four-hour chart, the moving averages start to converge, which we can see the, uh, or excuse me, the uh, ex exponential moving averages start to converge with the 8, 21, and 55-day R right here. They're converging almost, almost, almost starting to overlap on top of each other. And anytime you see that in conjunction with the Bollinger Bands here, again on the four hour, starting to bottleneck this tightly, that's a very, very good sign probability tells you that's a very good sign that price is going to break in one direction or another. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to break up, unfortunately. It doesn't. It also doesn't mean it's going to break down. It just means this is a good sign of a larger move to come anytime you see a bottlenecking of this size. And so I do believe a larger move is possibly coming here in the next 24 to 48 hours, in my opinion, and we should know uh, We should know soon enough. As far as trading, um, if, if, I would, if, you're, if you're going to trade this market, I'd wait for a pullback. I'd wait to buy somewhere, possibly expecting a bounce off this ascending support line here. Um, I don't think the risk to reward is there at the moment, um, but uh, but if you wanted to play that trade, that that'd be where I'd be looking to trade. Where I'd be looking to short is a possible bounce off this zone here. If price does come up above, watching to bounce off this six seven five zero zone, that'd be a good area to start laddering in shorts between six seven five zero and the six one eight fib here, which is sitting at about sixty nine fifty somewhere thereabouts. I'd ladder in shorts here with a very tight stop sitting at about seven thousand two uh, seven or excuse me at about seven thousand twenty seven thousand thirty somewhere thereabouts. If you wanted to play uh, wider seven thousand fifty. Because price, if does price break above this, if price does break above this six five uh, fib level here, but above this golden pocket, if that does end up happening, so if it breaks above seven thousand, it could very quickly rise up to this prior high 
of uh, 7380, or excuse me, of 7420. Um, and uh, and so I wouldn't want you to, um, I, you know, obviously I wouldn't want you to uh, to get stuck with a very, very tight, um, or, or with a very loose stop, knowing that it could break above that that quickly. Um, but that, that'd be kind of, I'd be kind of sitting back and waiting, waiting to see which way price is going to go. That's how I would play this market at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it there. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. As always, I would appreciate an upvote, like, or a restein, depending on where you're viewing this video. Till next time, guys, please trade safe. Take care of yourselves. This is working. Signing out.